Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, I have always opined on this platform severally that in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence. And that everything in politics is normally well planned, well scripted, and executed to achieve a specific political objective. Nothing in politics just happens for the sake of it. Earlier today, news emerged in the Republic of Kenya that the controller of budget, Margaret Nyakango, had been arrested in Mombasa. And because in politics nothing happens out of their coincidence, it was expected that that arrest was going to turn political. And Relu Dinga has actually issued a statement about that particular arrest. For me, if you ask me, the arrest is actually political. Because according to the information that we have, she has been arrested in connection to some complaints that were made against her in 2016. Nyakango was appointed to her current position in 2020. And for one to be appointed to that position, a lot of vetting normally takes place. So if anybody had any complaint against her in 2016, the best time for her to raise these issues were actually during the vetting. That never happened. But let's assume that's just like that. According to the information by the, the DPP, the first complaint after 2016, was actually filed in July 2022. That's according to what they're saying. Which for me, I don't want to cast my doubt, but I'm, I'm doubting. Then, according to them again, another complaint was resubmitted in November 2022. That was just immediately William Ruto took over. Immediately he was sworn in. The first target was Nyakango. Then another one, which actually prompted this move, was filed in October 2022. So in this video, I want to reveal to you guys the real story behind the arrest of Margaret Nyakango. So please, ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to today just pay very close attention. But first of all, let us begin by going through the statement by Raila Molodinga, because it's going to form the basis of our analysis. This is what Raila Odinga is saying. Statement by Right Honorable Raila Odinga on the arrest of the controller of budget December 5th, 2022. The statement says, the arrest and arraignment of controller of budget Mrs. Margaret Nyakango by the ECC did not come as a surprise to us in Azimio Lamoja One Kenya Coalition Party. We believe many Kenyans too saw it coming. The arrest was always coming in light of her determination to act professionally and with integrity in a regime infected by crooks and unprofessional conduct. It was only a matter of when, not if Mrs. Nyakango was going to send packing on frivolous and trump up charges to create room for a user-friendly holder of the office who will support and sanitize the looting currently underway. Her tribulations are politically motivated witch hunt, which the ESCC will find difficult to convince Kenyans at a time Kenyans are uh, raving under full-blown corruption. We encourage Mrs. Nyakango to remain strong in defense of integrity, professionalism, and dictate of good governance. As a party, we stand with Mrs. Nyakango and will offer whatever help we can in in uh, interest of the war against corruption in the country. This struggle will, will be nasty and long, but it is one Kenyans cannot afford to lose. We will lead that struggle from the front. So basically, by this letter, Relo Dinga is promising that they are going to stand with Nyakango as far as this matter is concerned. So in this video, I want to reveal to you guys the secrets behind the arrest. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel 
cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. But before I dive in, allow me to thank the following people for the coffee which they sent to me earlier. I want to thank them so much because it goes a long way in supporting the channel. You can also do the same using the numbers you are seeing on your screen. Ladies and gentlemen, why do you think Nyakango has been arrested? I want to play for you this video. Pay very close attention to what the lady is saying and convince me that this is not the reason why she has been arrested. Because I want to give you five reasons why she's been uh, arrested. The high taxation has contributed to capital flight. And I want to give just one example which will show us uh, the direction in which we are moving. This morning, in one of the groups that I am in, I saw the lady saying, why would I pay $200 to enter the park when I can see the same animals from the Tanzanian side by paying very little? So this is just an example. The other area is borrowing without a plan. This one, I'm using it in a very colloquial sense, in the sense that I have been approving payments of public debt, and I've looked at what we are paying for. Many of those things cannot be identified. You just find a name of why we borrowed, you cannot trace it to anything. You cannot tell what the money was spent for, and therefore there was no economic gain from that borrowing. It is just like taking Fuliza and then you go to the bar and drink it all. <laughs> you go back home, you'll find your family hungry and you'll find all those other things. So I don't really need to gain say this. That is what we have been doing for a long time. I have discussed with the Auditor General and we have said, can we track these loans and see what we did with them. Yes, I think it will help us going forward. But just so you know, honorable members, I did a report to the committee on uh, public debt and they told me, please check on the loans which we have taken recently in 2022. Tell us if we can link them with a project. They were shocked. We could not. We found some ambiguous uh, <laughs> definitions of the loans and uh, the treasury could not tell us what really we were going to do with those loans. So unless we wake up and link our borrowing to actual economic activity, we will not come out of this hole. That I can say without fear of contradiction. But here we are talking of abuse. We are talking of preparing budgets which are approved on 30th June and on 5th of July I find applications for Article 223. That clearly is an abuse of the system because we are saying that every once in a while we will find this item which is not budgeted for or which for which the budget is insufficient and then we will need to fall back on Article 223, but you will find uh, people are making applications to employ, people are making applications to repair vehicles, re to, to refurbish buildings. Really, those are some of the items that should not belong to Article 223. Now, I'm effectively informed, and I, and I think rightly so, that right now there are a lot of banya uh, routes through which uh, dollars come in. Uh, I mean that panya roots in the sense that people have devised methods where uh, dollars can be repatriated, say, to South Africa, and then the, the money finds its way to Kenya in some way, uh, so that it evades the banking system. So if it doesn't go through the banking system, then you may not catch up with it. So there are a lot of uh, dollars coming in through the black market 
And because of the way uh, the currency is uh, uh, depreciating, nobody wants to bring them to the open market because they want the rates to go up. I think there should be some form of amnesty, just the same way uh, we have done with the income tax. Can we have some amnesty for people to bring in dollars so that uh, they can be received without any penalties? Now, then there was a question on housing levy. Allow me to speak like an ordinary citizen in this one. The citizens have lost trust. Now, what happens if every time you speak to someone, they do not keep their word? I think you will not be in a position to, to trust them the next time they speak. Why I'm saying this is that I keep my ears open a lot of times when people are arguing, my friends on the golf course and all that, and I hear them say, who tells you we'll get these houses? So, that lack of trust is making people not to trust the process. It is a very noble uh, idea, and it is supposed to help the citizens. It is supposed to create jobs. It is even supposed to create, um, I mean, all those nice things. But how can we work on uh, improving the trust now, if you paid very close attention to that speech by the controller of budget, then you can understand why William Ruto and his government were not going to stand her any other day. But why do you think she was arrested? For me, number one, I think Margaret Nyakango was exposing this government without her knowledge. And the fact that she was exposing this government, they were taking note. You can get that from that speech. Today, I was reading some post by Pauline Jorogen. Actually, before this story came up, and I knew that there were some leakages in government. Pauline Jorogen made this post on her Facebook page that what is root of building at State House that would make State House budget allocation for general maintenance work spike like this? The communications budget has also doubled and there's a graph there from that graph you can clearly see that in uh, in 2020 the budget for maintenance at state house was 88 million in 2021 it was 31 million only in 2022 partly when william Ruto was now in office it shot to 92 million this year it has shot to 700 and 29 million so you can i want you to visualize this what kind of a building do you think 200 i mean 727 million can construct but now we are just talking of maintenance status maintenance going to 728 now these are some of the issues margaret nyakano was flagging so there was no way these guys were going to allow her in fact, if you, if you go further, there is even a graph there of the strategic, communication strategic unit, how their budget is being tripled. So basically, state house is being used to shift on money from state coffers because there is no justification whatsoever why the maintenance of state house, which is maintained annually, can shoot to 729 million. So, Nyakamu was exposing this government. At some point, if you listen to her speech there, she talked of uh, some maintenance fee, you know, things like those. So these guys were not going to allow her to continue. Number two, William Ruto is clearly out to kick out Uhuru Kenyatta's appointees. But someone like Nyakamu is protected under the constitution. She enjoys security of tenure which means there's no way you can just remove her from office. You can't just wake up as a president and fire someone like Nyakango. She will have to serve her term or she will have to be forced to resign. I don't see Nyakango giving in to any threat and intimidation. So the easiest route is to look for 
any scandal against her. And then arrest her, charge her. The next time parliament will be petitioned to vote to remove her from office. Then after that, a tribunal will be formed because that's the procedure. And just like Cherera group, she will also be forced out of office. And I'm glad that members of parliament from the Kisi region have already addressed the media over this issue. So the truth is, William Ruto is keen on removing Uhuru Kenyatta's appointees. One of them is Nyakango. Number three, the mentality of Mutuetu. I tend to think that these guys want someone from their own region to this position. The position is critical, it's important, it has access to sensitive information, so they need someone to cover them. And they believe that if someone from their tribe will uh, be appointed, then they'll be safe. Number four, I also tend to think that Margaret Nyakango's main undoing is actually her failure to conform. Every time there's a regime change, a lot of people are normally affected. And that's why you normally see a lot of people trying to conform. I want to give you the case of Atwoli. You know, Atwoli has supported each and every regime in the Republic of Kenya. Why? Because he realized that he needed to conform. So someone like Nyakango ought to have learned from Atwoli. But because of her integrity, she cannot do that. She cannot do that. So that is the main mistake she did. That Uhuru appointed her. Then there was a regime change. She thought she would just continue doing her work the way it's supposed to be done. Remember, I just want to give, uh, give you another example. When Uhuru Kenyatta came into office, there was an auditor general, Edward Edward Ouko. When Edward Ouko unearthed Anglo leasing, do you remember how the likes of Aden Dwale, Kimani Shung of this world, William Ruto, used to attack her? At some point, she was even referred to as a luo. You remember that time? So that's normally what happens when there's a regime change. So Margaret has failed to conform. So these guys want her out. Number, number five, which is also very important, I tend to think that these guys, Kenya Kwanza government, are keen on diverting the attention of the Republic of Kenya from the real issues. Today in this country, there are serious issues that Kenyans are talking about. There are serious corruption scandals that Kenyans are talking about. The edible oil scandal, which is Kenyans are talking about, who are the main players. So they want to, dis to divert the attention of the country from that. The cost of living is too high, so they want to divert the attention of the country by picking up a lady who was just doing her work. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Until next time. This is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.